Hi everybody. So I told you uh, one of my videos, I guess, that I had been on my tugboat for a month, which is a long time to be on a boat, to be honest. But anyway, when I got home, I had a little surprise waiting for me. This generator appeared suddenly in my workshop. And I said, whose generator is this? It just showed up. <laughs> so anyway, it was, uh, this belongs to my friend Sonny. He says he doesn't really need it, but he'd like to have it running just in case. But he said it doesn't, it doesn't start or it won't stay running or something like that. So we're gonna have a look. The very first thing I see is the fuel shutoff valve is uh, pretty much wrecked. The little handle is busted off of it. So that's one thing. This engine, it's a Honda GX160. It has an on-off switch over here. So that's, those things are always suspect. Who knows how long it's been sitting around. So we're gonna have to look at the carburetor, take the float ball off and see how much crud is floating around in there. Check the spark plug. Do all the usual stuff put some fresh gas in it see if we can get it get it to run so that's my project for the day i put up a community post that is a poll and i would like to know what you guys want to see more of do you want to see more of the firewood processor doing its thing do you want to see more uh, equipment maintenance or do you want to see uh product reviews which i'm not really big into product reviews um Vivor had sent me some products and I reviewed them. Eh, yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's nice to get some free stuff once in a while, but not really that big of a deal. Anyway, yeah, let me know what you think. I'd appreciate that. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get the, uh, get the cover off the carburetor so that I can gain access to the fuel line. I'm going to pull the fuel line off and see because I can't tell which way that valve is facing, whether it's on or off. It looks like it's off to me, but who knows. That's nice and clean. Look at that. It's like it's never been used. Wow, that's oil dripping out of there. That's nice. Okay, now I need to get some rags. Wasn't expecting oil to come running out of the uh, air filter. All right, that was interesting. Why do we have oil right here? It's clean oil. Possibly somebody oiled the air clean the air filter foam and just kind of overdid it and it ran out okay so there's a hose that goes from the uh, valve cover to the air cleaner so what that does is any blow by gases that come out off the engine the carburetor sucks them back into the intake to be reburned and that's for emissions purposes so we're just going to pluck that hose off of there and then we're going to get these two screws out right off of there without any grief. Of course, the thing on the back to hold the fuel line, this was holding it up. Okay, so take that off. So let me get a pair of pliers and I'll see if we can 
Yeah, I think that's in the off position. We'll get a pair of pliers and see if we can turn this to the on position. And I think what I'll do is I'll pull the fuel bowl off next. Now, yes, I need a, a container. All right, so we have two. Two bolts on the bottom of this. One is, I suspect, just a drain. That's what it looks like, just a drain. That's to drain any water, crud, whatever. And it's still coming out, so maybe the fuel valve is in the on position. Okay, so I think I turned it to the off position. Let's see if it's still dumping fuel out. thing that should come out is a little bit left in the bowl. Yep, that was it. Okay. So the fuel valve was in the off position, or in the on position. It is now off. And I'm trying to be careful to not rip the little gasket here because I don't have another one. Uh, actually, it's not so bad. So if you look in here, normally you take these things apart and there's all kinds of crud down in here. But this one doesn't look so so bad, so we'll just wipe it out a little bit. Yeah, there's nothing in there that's there's nothing in there that's bad. So that's a good thing. So I think what I'll do is I'll pull the carburetor off. Well, I'm going to attempt to pull the carburetor off. These things can be a little tricky. Maybe it just pops right off of there. I don't know. But I have to take the I have to take the fuel line off next so that I can get this off. There's also there's also linkage for the throttle. That has to come off. One of the things I like to do is I like to take a picture of how the linkage is connected in case I take something off and I drop it or whatever and I can't remember how it goes, then at least I have a record of how it's supposed to go back on there. And we have to carefully pick the spring off of here. So we're just going to... I'm just using my fingers for this. Just gently lift that off. That's one. And then and then this. This is a little more tricky, I think. I think you well, I don't know. I think I gotta take the carburetor off for that. Now I have now I have a little more flexibility here. Turn just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now there's the carburetor. I didn't do too bad with the gasket. Peeled a little bit of it off of there. All right. So I think uh, I think what we'll do is we'll reach in and pull the jet out and clean it. You need a straight bladed screwdriver to reach down in there and it has to be of sufficient width to touch both of the the grooves in the in the end of the jet but not so wide that it mars the threads okay so this is a very common thing so notice the screwdriver the blade is straight i'm going to put that in there and i'm in the grooves i'm going to pull the jet out This is a very common issue for this jet to be clogged. I'm trying to get that out of there. There it goes. Okay. Okay, so this piece has a tiny little hole 
all the way down inside. See, there's the other end of the hole. And what happens is that will get clogged. And it looks to me like it has a nice blob of crud in there. So I need to get a piece of very fine wire and I need to get that out of there. So this allows gasoline to pass through that hole and come up into the actual jet itself. Now the jet itself also has holes, little teeny tiny holes. So all these need to be cleared. There's even a hole, there's even a hole right there. It's really hard to see, but so all those need to be cleared out. And we can do that with a very, very fine drill bit. All right, so what you're looking at here is this, this piece. This holds the main jet in place inside the carburetor. So we're going to put this under the microscope. Hopefully this. Okay, so there's that. And it looks like there's something stuck in the bottom. Well, we're going to flip this over. I can't. I can't tell. It's hard to. It's really hard to tell. There's, there's glare and eh, maybe not. Okay. Focus in there. Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of dirt, but not too bad. So this is actually clear. But just in case, what I've done is I've got my drill index here. Now this drill index goes from number 61 to number 80. So these are extremely fine drill bits. As you can see, very, very tiny. So we're going to grab a number 70. That should pass through the hole. Put these aside. You don't want to drop them on the floor. That's for certain. <laughs> okay. So let's see if we can put this down in here. So I'm just reaching in here and just kind of scraping. Just to get any dirt out that I can. It looks like there's a little bit of dirt in there. And actually this drill bit is too large. So we're going to get a different drill bit. So a number 74 drill bit is 0 0.0225 inches. There we go. That passes through the whole thing. Now I'm just going to take some, uh, some contact cleaner and I'm going to shoot that through the hole. And then we'll set that aside. We're using MG Chemicals Electrosolve Contact Cleaner. This is uh, primarily for electronic components, but it's good stuff. There. Okay. And just verify that there's nothing in the hole. Looks fairly clean. Yep, okay, so that one's good. Now we'll put that aside and we're going to move on to the actual jet. And we're going to look at the holes in the jet. Those are clear. Those appear to be clear. Okay, those are all clear. Oh, look at that dirt. That one, it's either extra tiny or it's got something stuck in there.
Oh, yep, it had a blob of it had a blob of goo in there. Okay, so that wasn't helping matters. All right, so we shoved the we shoved the uh, drill bit in here and all the way out the other side. So that says it is clear. This one looks like it's got some goop in it. So I'm going to degoop this one. And same deal. I'm just pushing the drill bit all the way through like that. But yeah, there's definitely some sticky substance in there. The contact cleaner should clean that out. Now there's another hole here. Yeah, that one looks all the way through. And then can't really show you the hole that goes through the entire jet. It, it, I can't really focus on it. But anyway, the hole that goes through the whole the entire jet is also clear. All right, so I'm just going to shoot this with some contact cleaner. This is kind of this is kind of funny. <laughs> it goes all over the place. This evaporates and doesn't leave any residue, so it's good stuff. Okay, so the jet is now cleaned out and cleared. I'm just going to look at the holes again now that I've sprayed it. That hole, I can't see. Let me flip you over here. All there. Yeah, they're clear. Alright, so those are clear, those are clear, those are clear. Okay, that one's clear. All right, looks good. So we've cleared this part of the jet, and we've cleared the main jet. So that eliminates that as being an issue with the carburetor. Okay, so I've looked at the rest of this carburetor. There really isn't anything else on here to, to bother messing with. We know the float works, so I'm just going to leave that alone. We saw fuel coming out of it. Uh, everything else looks good. There are adjustment, I, I guess that's an adjustment screw, underneath that cap there, but we're not going to mess with that. The, these carburetors, they're fixed. So you pretty much start this thing up and it runs at the speed that it's set at, and you don't have to mess with it. So anyway, I'm going to put the... Uh, I'm going to put the freshly cleaned out jet back in place make sure there's no make sure there's no uh, dirt stuck to it I'll drop that back in and then we'll put the plug back in and then we'll take our screwdriver and get this back in place Being careful not to cross thread. Get it right in. And just, just snug. You don't need to no death grip, you just put it snug. Okay, so we're gonna put the we're gonna put the bowl gasket back on. One of the best things you can have in your shop is O-ring grease. This stuff comes in handy for a lot of things. But I want to I want to lube this o-ring because it's a little crusty I just want to get it lubed up and that will extend its life so put that back in oops wrong place put that in there like that and then we'll put the bowl back on bowl, if we remember, faced 
that direction because the fuel line is over here and that smaller plug was on this side so we're going to put it back the way it was okay so this goes in Again, just snug. And then this is the drain. Let's put that back on. Again, just a little snug. You don't want the vibration to have it fall off of there. Okay, so let's put the throttle linkage on. Let's get it right about there. So I can get that in there. There we go. So that's that part of the throttle linkage. And then we need the little tiny spring. Now, of course, along the way over there, this little spring goes in this hole. There we go. Slide that back on. Pop the fuel line back on. I'm gonna slide this around so I can get to it. We must tighten the fuel line. Because if we don't, we're gonna have fuel all over the place. Now we'll put this on. Okay. There's that. Just thread the nuts back on and tighten them up and that will reattach the carburetor. This is just these two nuts and that holds everything on. That holds the carburetor on, the air, the air cleaner base, but before I tighten these I'm going to leave that loose until I get this last screw in the back. So I'm going to thread that in as far as I can with my fingers. Now I'll tighten this in the back. And now we'll tighten our carburetor nuts. Then the, the hose, the exhaust gas, uh, let's see, what is it? The blow-by gas hose, that's going to go back in. So this goes here or here. goes there this goes in here and that just sits in there it's all it does it's not mounted in any way goes there So the spark plug is a little tricky because it's up in here like this. So we've got a 13 16 spark plug socket and then I have a flex head ratchet. So hopefully we can get this on here. Wow. I mean, seriously, that spark plug is brand new, brand new. There is no, there's not even any carbon on it. So I wonder if he <laughs> replaced the spark plug 
thinking that that was the problem. This is what I've done. I pulled the pull start off the front of the engine. I put a three quarter inch socket in my drill. And now I can lay the spark plug up against the engine and spin the engine and see if I'm getting a spark. And I see a spark. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But it is it's definitely sparking. Okay, so that's good. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to put the we're going to put the uh, spark plug back in. We're going to turn the fuel on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn the fuel on right now while I'm doing the spark plug. And the reason is, if there's any leaks, I want to catch it right now. So, brand new spark plug. I'll put that back in. These were in here pretty tight for obvious reasons. You wouldn't want them falling out. Okay. I don't see any fuel leaking from anywhere, so that's a good thing. All right, it has oil. Seriously, looks like this thing has never run. So the generator has everything it needs. It has oil, it has spark, it has fuel. I'm gonna put the choke on. And now we're gonna give it a give it a pull. See what happens.